On this episode of China Uncensored, I sat down with the most beautiful woman in Canada, and so can you, if you sit down while watching this. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Brave, heroic, a peerless beauty. These are just a few of the things people have said about me, which is why I was so happy to speak with Anastasia Lin, someone I consider even braver and heroicer. Not an equally peerless beauty, of course, since the whole point of being peerless is you don't have peers. You might know Anastasia Lin as the 2015 Miss World Canada. She caused an international uproar when she actually tried to uphold Miss World's mission statement, beauty with a purpose. She has spoken out about religious persecution in China and acted in films that highlight human rights issues. Come on, Anastasia! Beauty with a purpose is supposed to be a thing you say, not a thing you do. But no, she actually did stuff, like testify before U.S. Congress on religious persecution in China. So when the finals for last year's Miss World were held in China, obviously Anastasia had to accept consequences of her political action. In other words, the Chinese regime denied her a visa, making it impossible for her to compete in the finals. Also, they threatened her father, who lives in China. Also, they launched a state-run media blitz to smear her name. Did it work? Did it silence this beauty with a purpose? I took time out of my busy hero schedule last week to talk with her and find out. These are the sacrifices I make for you, my audience, talking to beauty queens. So, Anastasia, I really admire you because my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, has <laughs> written several articles about you.、Uh, they have not written anything about me yet. Well, I feel quite honored that they did that. <sighs> It is. It's the highest honor. Isn't it? <laughs>、yeah. Well, anyways, they've written about you that you will pay a cost for being tangled with hostile forces against China. Have you paid that cost? And- I think what they meant is that I wouldn't get into the mainland market. But who knows? Maybe I'm already on the underground market. They just don't know about it. But so tell us about some of the things you've you've been doing since this whole Miss World thing went down. Well, on the Miss World final day, I went to National Press Club in Washington D.C. They invited me for a luncheon. That's sort of a response to the Miss World final in China. They're kind of a big deal, right? Yeah, there were a lot of cameras there. <coughs> Felt quite um, um, honored to have that platform、mm-hmm. to talk to the world.、Um, and then. There's the Oxford Union debate. So you really are syncing up with the hostile foreign forces against China. I'm Washington. <laughs> the first thing you do is you go to Washington D.C. Why, why, why not go to North Korea,、well, an ally of China? North Korea. I, th- I think they'll probably detain me if I go there.、Um, well, you are a beauty queen. I mean, who wouldn't want to detain you? <laughs> Oh my goodness! I wasn't ready for that joke, but okay.、Um, Washington D.C. Of course. You mean the, CNN doesn't do things like that? No, not really. They're professional. Should,、um, what was I saying again? Yes, Washington D.C.、Uh, Washington D.C. is the capital of the、um, uh, United States,、mm, which is、you. the core of the free world. So I feel、uh, to be able to speak there. Actually, on the day I was, I was presenting there,、um, Barack was hosting a. You were on a first-name basis with the president of the United States. <laughs> well, we're competitors because he was hosting a press conference across the street from me. It was kind of hard to compete for attention with the president of U.S., but I think I hold up well. <laughs>、um, and then I went to testify in the U.K. Parliament,、um, and I went to meet the Dalai Lama last、uh, last week. The Dalai Lama. So clearly, you have been totally shunned by the rest of the world for speaking out against China. At times, when my dress sponsors、um, pulled out from sponsoring me because he had、um, family members who are still in China, I did feel a little bit like the carpet under me was pulled away. But、um, I did receive tremendous support from all over the world. Well, about that, I know you have family in China. I'm wondering how they're doing, but also like the difference between you, like what your family was threatened, but you still did what you felt was right. How do you feel about 
your dress sponsor, as an example, having their family be used against them in that way? I feel quite terrible for that guy because it must be very scary to suddenly get an email from the Chinese consulate. Um, no one wants to put their family at risk. I'm the same, but at the beginning I felt that if I don't use the chance to speak up, I might not ever get the chance again. And if they know that this will work on me, then they might keep doing things like that to me, to my family. It's just, uh, I felt like that was the only solution, speaking up. It seems like speaking up really did cause quite an uproar in the world. Since that, has everything been okay with your father in China, or has there been more pressure? Um, I know that his business partner backed out from a deal, and that's probably just one partner that he told me about. Um, in China, since the state media was not very friendly with me. Um, what are you talking about? The Global Times wrote several articles all about you. Yeah, um, question why I was entangled with anti-China forces. Um, yeah, my father did receive tremendous pressure. And nowadays he doesn't even tell me about it because he knows that his phone has been listened to. Um, if he says something, it might not be good for his family. He has a very young family in China. I have a half-brother who's eight this year. That's off very, very serious, heavy stuff. Um, I'm, I'm curious. So you've, you've been such a, help, a heartfelt and dedicated person uh, promoting you know, human rights in China. And you know, when I see that kind of passion, I can't help but be suspicious what's really behind what you're up to. Or did you, do you have any dark secrets from your past? Like what kind? Well, I mean, I heard, <clears throat> you know, now you're talking, you're speaking up against the Communist Party in China. But I remember hearing that you uh, used to be, uh, uh, what do you call it, a student council leader. Or a young pioneer. Young pioneer. Yeah, I did that for a few years. It was an um, intriguing experience because at the time I really didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I felt like I did, and it felt pretty awesome at the time because you're the elite group. But then um, only after I went to Canada did I realize that um, all I was doing was kind of brainwashing other students, and there's nothing glorious about it. Um, I think is that kind of partly motivated me to try to let the rest of the Chinese people know what they're going through. So now you're trying to brainwash people with the truth. I hope that I'm just presenting another side of facts, information that I wasn't able to get to make it available to them and they can make it their own, make their own choice. And do you feel that message has gotten into China? with all the state-run media? I think it has. Um, actually, there are a lot of Chinese people who climb over the Great Firewall to see information outside. And I remember last time when I went to Taiwan for a conference about religious freedom, I met a Chinese tourist group in the airport, and they all wanted to take pictures with me. And I felt quite surprised that they were able to read about it. And they told me that although the national media would write one side of the story, they can pretty much get what it was about. Mm -hmm. This girl must have some, said something that the commies didn't like. Yeah. Wow. Well, I am very encouraged to see that uh, angering the Chinese Communist Party can give someone so many opportunities. I hope you'll give me a few tips after the, <laughs> the interview. I'm um, sure you have gotten a lot of opportunities because of it. Oh, yes, I am. People love me. It's, it's, it's true. It's true. I'm thinking I can do it pretty well in a beauty pageant myself. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, thanks for that support. I'll, I'll use that in my uh, pamphlets that I, Miss World Canada promotes me as a beauty pageant. So I understand you're an actress and that you have a f new film coming out later this year. Yeah, it's called The Bleeding Edge. Well, we have a clip of that, so why don't we play that?
Well, that certainly looked exciting. It gave me all kinds of feels. Why do you think this is an important movie, an important topic? Well, it talks about um, one of the most sensitive topics in regards to Chinese Communist Party now. It's the organ harvesting of pr prisoners of conscience. After talking to victims, I realized that this is something that, you know, perhaps I will have to work up my courage to do. Well, it sounds like it's a good thing you did because, as I understand, you were nominated for the Best Actress Award in the upcoming Leo Award. That's one of uh, Canada's biggest screen awards, correct? Yes, I feel quite honored. So, actress, beauty pageant, what is next for you? Well, I have two documentaries coming out about my experience in Hong Kong. Um, it does address the bigger issue of suppression of freedom of conscience in China, which is something I think it urgently needs to be addressed. And I'm going to continue to act in more films. Great. Exciting. And, and I'm running for Miss World this year. Ah, so what is, what is this going to be? So because of last year's visa denial, a Miss World offered me the spot for Canada in 2016 Miss World. And they have confirmed it recently. And so, Miss, so Miss World, the larger organization, not just yes. Miss World Canada. Ah. Yes. They have offered to That's me last year. I didn't really know if I was going to take it at that time. Mm -hmm. But I think since I continued on this platform, I initiated, I should continue. Um, and it's a great platform. It's called Beauty with Purpose, yeah. right? So um, Miss World Canada confirmed my spot is great sacrifice for them. So they just gave you the Miss World Canada position, almost like you've been elected beauty queen for life. I wish, well, I... I mean, I just, I, you, you talk about democracy, and yet you're a queen, beauty queen. Some media call me the badass beauty queen. I feel quite honored to I, be I did not comfortable that. with that kind of language on, <laughs> on this show. This is a family show. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe they were quite strong, but I think it's an accurate description. <laughs> Wow, I hope somebody writes that about me someday soon. Just, just say you agree. We can Photoshop that in, I'm sure. Um, so, how do you think this coming year will be different from the previous year? We don't know where it's going to be held yet. Ah. Yes. I hope it's going to be in a country where freedom of speech is encouraged. Um, oh, so, so China, right? I mean, it's in, it's in the Constitution, they have freedom of speech. Well, anyways, but I hope it's not going to be in China, mm. but anything can happen. In history, there were three times, like final in three years in a row, that was held in China before. So it could happen this year. I hope not. I don't want to be denied twice. I'm actually a little surprised. I would have thought they would have wanted to sweep this thing under the table since it caused such an uproar for the pageant, but... Well, I think it's great for them to offer this opportunity, and I hope this year they'll make the right choice, since they know that re repressive regimes fundamentally don't agree with us um, in our values. So um, I don't think they're going to choose China again. We'll see. Yeah. Well, I guess you are the representation of beauty with a purpose. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us, Anastasia. The film is called Bleeding Edge. It's coming out later this year. If you want to be notified when you can watch it, go to thebleedingedgemovie.com and subscribe, then enter your email address. So, what do you think I can do to be more like Anastasia Lynn? Leave your comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Not only did Anastasia refuse to submit to China's manipulation, so did Miss World Canada's national organizers. And so, what's your plan to undermine China? How are you planning to undermine China? What's your plan to undermine China? Thank you, never, never mind. That's...